Uh, good morning. It's wonderful to be here and worship the Lord during this second Sunday of July and same time study His Word and uh, concentrate on the truth about uh, about prayer, the Christian praying. So uh, let us uh, be th- uh, review our own lives and see uh, our uh, how much we have become prayerful and how much we need to pray even more as we uh, come closer to the Lord. And it's wonderful to uh, just study about prayer, though we, all of us are always praying from our youth even to our adulthood and even until maybe uh, our uh, mature years when we are waiting for the Lord to come again and also to uh, end our lives. One of the most beautiful experiences we have in uh, uh, having with the Lord Jesus Christ is the experience of uh, praying. So in connection with that, I would like to read uh, one verse. First uh, Samuel chapter 23, shall we all stand together? And uh, as I read to you, First Samuel 12, 23. Andrea, you read with me. You have different uh, versions. It's okay. First Samuel 12, 23. Begin. Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you. We can continue to study about prayer uh, this morning. So may you uh, refresh our mind concerning this important uh, Christian privilege and responsibility and teach us again so that we will uh, be reminded of all these wonderful things God is uh, teaching us. Be with your servant now and be with your people as they come and join this day and the whole day to give you worship and prayer and glorify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all sit together, please. So prayer reminds us of the most important responsibility of the Christian. Since we were very young children, we were taught to pray. And in our middle adulthood, we are always reminded to pray. And then even in our adult years, we are reminded to pray. So even if we have been reminded again and again, yet in our experience in our Christian lives, the most difficult Christian discipline to learn is prayer. And uh, so uh, in church, even uh, during prayer meeting, it's very hard to be present and uh, attend prayer meeting. And also in other areas of uh, church activity, when we need to pray, it's still very hard for us always pray. But though it's a wonderful experience to always have fellowship with God through prayer. That is why I entitled my message The Sin of Ceasing to Pray for You. It seems very negative. It seems very rebuke sounding. It seems hard. But uh, truly, Every week we could look back to the things that uh, we need to do. And always we are always reminded of the sin of ceasing for one another uh, before the Lord. And uh, so uh, you prepare your hearts and your minds as we review a little bit about things about prayer in our lives. So as we study, we review from 
from the beginning, from Genesis, and then uh, we go to the ending in the last part of the New Testament. But I just, I will just summarize things about prayer now, and so don't worry, it's not too hard, too long, and too difficult. So there are four things I would like us to think about concerning prayer uh, this uh, morning. First, God moving and teaching men to pray. So it was really God who taught men to pray since the beginning. And then, men who prayed. We will review from uh, history in the Bible about people of God who prayed and the things that they learned in their lives because they were praying. Three, Jesus Christ, the example and model of prayer. Of course, Jesus Christ, no one can beat him because he is our God to, who, to whom we pray all the time. And he's also the example and model of prayer. And number four here, uh, uh, Christians today should be prayerful. This is now for me and for you. Christians today must be prayerful. And that is a very wonderful uh, thing that the Lord is giving us. Now go back to the Old Testament. People of God prayed. So we go to Genesis chapter 4, verse 26, and we read. I will start with 25. Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named him Seth. So Seth was the one who took the place of Abel. Abel was murdered by his brother Cain. So now the Lord gave them a son, Seth, for God has appointed another a seed for me instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. And verse 26, and as for Seth, to him also a son was born, and he, he named him Enos. Then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. It's a very beautiful verse, because in this important happening in the life of Adam and Eve, people began to pray. So that this was the beginning of prayer in the Bible. It's amazing that uh, even this important ministry was recorded in the Bible. And so, Old Testament fathers are all the people involved here who prayed. So the first one was Seth, and he had a son, Enosh, who began to challenge people to pray everywhere. Now remember, on the other hand, uh, Cain also had started to, to have his family, but they never bothered about prayer. So it was only uh, Seth, the one who took care of Abel, who started to pray. So Enos was a starting point. When he gave birth to a son, Enos, he started to pray. And it reminds us, so many young people, they pray once in a while, but uh, they don't pray so much. But when they start to have children and then commit them to the Lord, and that, and that teaches them to pray intently. So it's a wonderful experience to have to marry and have children. It gives you a, a deeper and clearer uh, meaning of the Christian discipline called prayer. So, men continued to pray. And uh, men continued to raise children. But on the other hand, uh, Cain had more children. Cain had more children. But anyway, for the children of Cain, they, they, Lord, they came up special people who were prayerful. 
So in chapter 5, we see there the family of Adam who were godly and uh, obedient to the Lord. And uh, on the other hand, on, in chapter 4, four were the, the children of Cain who, who were not so prayerful. And so, as we study along here, it's a very interesting because we go to chapter 5, verse 22, and uh, we read, After uh, we start with 21, Enoch lived 65 years and begat Methuselah. After he begat Methuselah, he walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. And who was uh, the one mentioned here? It was now hmm, Enoch who walked with God. So when he walked with God, that means he was always very prayerful, he was always meditating, he was always uh, doing the will of God, he was always obedient. And then, in verse 22, as he walked with God, he, it says here, verse 23, so all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Then verse 24, very important verse. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. So at the age of 365 years, after talking with the Lord for a long time, one day he disappeared. And the preachers say he was ruptured because he walked with God. One day the Lord said, you know, Enoch, it's wonderful to always walk with me and you. Now, you don't have to go back home now. I will bring you to my home. And so that's how Enoch was ruptured. A picture of, in the coming days, kita nga mga Christian, ma-rupture sa kita. And then, uh, the story continues. Uh, the Old Testament, wicked men. We go to the chapter 6 now. So many Christians, believers like uh, Methuselah, Lamech, they all ser served the Lord faithfully. And remember Methuselah? He was the one who lived the longe longest before the flood. Because how old was Methuselah when he died? Anybody knows? Pilang edad? 900? 900? 900? 69. Wow. Pila na lang ka days kag mag 1,000 ang iyang age. Could, live, could men let, live like that? Yes. Because during the time, the world was young. Dagan prutas, dagan vegetables, the air was fresh, and then ang mga fish fresh. So because of that, everything was very healthy. And men lived long lives. I would like to meet Nezusela someday. How would he look at the age 69? Siguro at 69, siya. He would look just as old as I am. And I am already 73. So we'll, we'll see to that when we go to heaven someday. And the second thought is not only Old Testament fathers, to asila mga Old Testament fathers, Old Testament world in chapter 6 was a very interesting world because it says here in uh, these verses, uh, verse 1, chapter 6, men began to multiply on the earth, face of the earth and the daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all who, whom they chose. Very important verse because that means that before the flood, my mga men, men, sons of God, who were they? So, 
hatagan solution sa mga scholars. But one most important solution was the sons of God were simply uh, the demons who rebelled against God together with Satan. And when they saw beautiful women, they, they married. Is this true? Nga mga demons nagminyo sa mga babae nga tao? And then later on, it says here, their children were giants. We don't really know 100%. But we can only surmise maybe 50-50. Nga basin tinood ni. Nga ang mga tao sa pagbinyo nila sa mga demons, ang ilang mga anak, mga giants. So, sa mythology, if you were interested to study mythology uh, in the history of the world, sa mythology, there were people like Adonis and uh, etc. And then the other, the goddesses, si Lani Minerva, ug uban pa. Possible that they were demonic beings, half man, half demon. And they became demigods. So they became part of the folklore. And uh, so, folklore usually have real beginning. But later on, after thousands of years of storytelling, medyo na-corrupted na sila nga. Mura tunga na lang ang tinood, tunga sa dang dili tinood. So, someday in heaven, we will know the reality of all those. So anyway, there were half gods and half men. And so, God found Noah, verse 8. A very godly man, and God said, During your time, Noah, dapat patay ni tanan yung mga half demons ni. So there was flood. And only the family of Noah, Noah, from the family of Seth, became or the ones who were godly men. And they were the only ones who were not destroyed during the flood. So these are fantastic stories. As I said, 50-50 only, uh, whether they are true or not, some, in heaven someday, the Lord will tell us which is which and which is true. But more probably, it happened. That's why God destroyed men during the time of Noah, aside from being Ungodly. So, na nasa outline ko ng sulat din eh. And so, the world became very wicked. And so, God sent us a flood to destroy the whole world. And then, amazing thing, because after the flood, there was a new generation of men. And then, they were not prayerful, they were not Godly, they were not uh, relying on the Lord. Only the part of the family of Noah became uh, believers and uh, prayerful and godly. And so we go forward to history. There was another part here in Genesis chapter 2, 10, verse 25. Very interesting verse again. The answer to this will only be answered by the Lord when we go to heaven. Verse 25, Genesis chapter 10. To Eber was born two sons. The name of one was Peleg. For in his days, the earth was divided. And his brother's name was Joktan. Joktan begad. Almondad. Shilifat. Shilipad. Asar, Mab, Nabeh, Jera, etc. But what is important here was uh, Peleg, according to he was he belonged to the family of godly people from Noah. During his time, the earth was divided. Now listen. Maybe this is the first time you heard it. It means that when God created the heavens and the earth, what was part was land. And then the other part was sea. So, the, the part was land, people dwelt there. The other part was sea. 
And so after the flood, the land started to move. And uh, because uh, it moved, uh, little by little, as part of punishment upon people, uh, there developed, you know, continents and uh, countries. In fact, they said once upon a time, a long time ago, the Philippines was very near Malaysia and Indonesia. Have you heard that in history? Philippines was very near Malaysia and East and Indonesia. And so the Philippine plate, you know, started to move away from Asia. And other parts of the world also did the same. It, everything started during the time of this man, Pelling, the earth divided. So it's true because it's written in the Bible. So in other words, it is not true that when God created Adam and Eve, God created man from, from you know, from apes. Nag-develop ang tao ba? From animals, uh, from uh, one-celled animal, and then it developed into ameba, etc. And then it developed into small animals, it developed into big animals, it developed into apes. And according to science, the apes developed into man. But there is no such story in the Bible. Because when God made Adam and Eve, suddenly they were already a man and a woman. No such thing as developing from, uh, from the apes. So, man spread all over the world. later, the earth divided. So, uh, well, praise the Lord. Uh, the Philippines came about the division, di ba? Because if not, wala kita Philippines karon. Very beautiful country, very beautiful in Oriental place where we live. I don't think we will ex exchange Philippines with other places. And even now, you know, Philippines is traveling about two to three inches every year, far away from the Asian mainland, and going nearer to the other part of the world. That's what scientists say. So it must be true because they have measured that every year. They travel the Philippines farther from the mainland. And not only the Philippines, other continents also, other islands also are traveling. And so, Mauni letter C sa akong nga message the Old Testament divided. But in all this, what happened to the world? Did the world become godly? Did the world become more prayerful and more obedient? No. Only a few became obedient and godly. And so in history, according to the Bible, during the time of Peleg, people become very un ungodly. And when uh, the world, uh, after the flood, the Lord said, you've spread out all over the world. So because men would not spread out, God divided the land. And so ang land to isak apart, and then ang sige mounting apart, the land started to travel, like I was telling you. That's why uh, part of the world is sea, but not all sea, because other countries, the continents of Asia and America and Europe divided. So that's uh, the story of uh, the beginning. And you know, in the future, when you read Revelation at the last part, the earth again will unite and go back to the land on one part and the middle part will be the sea. And what the, in the sea, what will happen there? The, the Lord said, He will send His uh, city of God from heaven and it will settle down on the earth. In other words, the sea part in the future will become New Jerusalem. And all the land part will be land again. So the Philippines will be connected to Indonesia, Malaysia, maybe Japan, and etc. So, in all this, 
you know, res result of me, men, stopping to pray, ceasing to pray. So, that's why we must continue to pray so that the world will be at peace in the future. It brings us to the second point. Now, in the later part of history now, we are now in much later history, maybe 2000 BC, 1000 BC. A man began to pray. So it started with uh, uh, Israel, the city that, uh, I mean, the nation that came from Abraham. You know, Abraham struggled in his prayer life. Sometimes he would pray, sometimes he would not. Sometimes he would believe God, sometimes he would not. And so the Lord said, you settle in the, in the land I gave you. But, but Abraham wavered in his faith. He went to Egypt. So several things happened there in Egypt. As a result of Abraham struggling with his prayer life and faith. In, the way, in, the, in a way, in the story in the Bible, we read that Abraham believed God. And so when he believed God, God gave him a son named Isaac. And we know the story in Genesis. From Abraham came Israel. So, in Israel now, in their history, they started to obey or disobey God. In a way, when they obeyed God, God blessed them. And so, later on, in the later part of Israel, maybe uh, 500 B.C., there were people who, who started to believe God from Israel itself. And the first prophet who believed God and started to pray and follow God was Prophet Samuel, the high priest of Israel, Prophet Samuel. And later on, from Samuel, you know, all the events happened during the part of uh, start of the kingdom from King Israel to King David, and etc. And so, in the history of Israel now, people who prayed came, the, the prophets, in 3rd uh, and 2nd Samuel chapter 3, important prophet who prayed was Elijah. So we are reminded of all the story about Elijah, praying to God and following him. Then, after Elijah was Elisha, all the miracles during the time of Elisha. We read the story of Elisha in Second Kings chapter 3 to chapter 13. And the amazing thing about Elisha was when he died in his tomb, even when a dead man was thrown into his tomb, the power in the life of Elisha revived because it revived the dead man. Patay na, nabuhay pa. Sa nga na ni Elisha. So very, very interesting. So all these people were very pray prayerful and godly. And even in their death, people, they still, you know, express the power of their lives. Now other, other prophets in Israel, major prophets and minor prophets, during their time, they were very prayerful. Even when, during the time Israel was uh, exiled from their country. So, 700 BC. Those were the times when the Israel, Israel was di divided. The northern kingdom and then the southern kingdom, 700 BC. And all these beautiful stories of the prophets trusting God and teaching Israel to go back to the Lord. So we have Hosea, Amos, and then Jonah. Remember Jonah? He was swallowed by the, the fish because he would disobey God. But then he repented and then God, uh, you know, received him from the, the fish mouth. And he went to, uh, uh, to, what's this? to the country of uh, 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 what country was that? Uh, Assyria, Assyria. And so in Assyria, 
he preached and the Assyrian people and to the king repented but after after 300 years uh, after about 50 years the Assyrian Empire disobeyed God and so God uh, condemned the Assyrian Empire but during the time the Assyrian Empire swallowed the ten tribes of Israel and imprisoned them but after the uh, Assyrian Empire came Babylon and in Babylon they also disobeyed the Lord and uh, so all of Israel the 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 two kingdoms of Judah and Benjamin were also were brought to exile so all these years all the prophets of Israel prayed they prayed for revival they prayed for God's blessing only part of their prayers were answered because Israel was uh, was exiled so all those prophets remember uh, the Psalms, the writer of the Psalms, Micah, Sephaniah, Jeremiah, Obadiah, and all these other prophets, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, until they came to about 500 BC, time of Zechariah and Joel and Malachi, the end of the Old Testament. So the prophets prayed and prayed, but God did not rebuild Israel. So after the 500 BC, we are conscious of 500 years, 400 silent years for Israel. And uh, during the time, uh, prophets of Israel continued to preach and teach. The Jews continued to beg God because of their sins. And so there was a time when uh, some kings start to re return the Israel to their land. And so when they return to their land, we all know the story. And they continued to pray and beg God for revival. And, uh, and so they came to the ending of those 400 silent years. And uh, during the time, it's about about 5 BC. Somebody was born a very special person. Uh, Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem and uh, he started to minister to people. And, uh, and so all this happened. Uh, Jesus Christ was born and uh, uh, because of that uh, the Savior of the world came. So what was the life of Christ? He started to, to minister to people. And uh, during his ministry, three and a half years, and then uh, he was arrested. Before that arrest, he went to the garden and prayed for Israel and for the whole world. A beautiful prayer that is recorded in uh, John 17. And so in our time now, all that is past. And Israel later on returned to her, to her land uh, uh, in the 1900. Uh, the Jews started to return. And all these years, Israel continued to pray and pray and pray. God, little by little, answered their prayers until in 1948, Israel as a nation started. So Jesus was an example and model of prayer. So what I am trying to say, I am trying to say that all these terrible years that came to the world and came to Israel, people learned to pray. And so today, Christians, we Christians, know how to pray. The Lord said, okay, when you pray, you pray like this. In Matthew 6, 13, Our Father in heaven, and then at the end you say, in Jesus' name, Amen. So all this command to pray was repeated by Paul and Peter and John and other people of God. So all this part of the history of uh, faith in God 
and then prayer. And all these years, people prayed, though the com most complete answer to prayer was not given yet. Because the most complete answer to prayer is when uh, the Lord will come again and start the millennium. So the, as the command is given to all of us, the Lord wants us to live people, Christians who are today, we should live a lifestyle of prayerfulness. So now, Christians in our modern world are no longer taught to pray or forced to pray like during the time of Enosh or during the time of, uh, uh, of uh, Methuselah or in, during the time of uh, uh, Noah or during the time of Abraham. They are no, we are no longer forced to pray. We are now free to pray. And uh, on one condition, if you start stop praying, you will be sinning against the Lord. It's up to you now whether you want to pray or not, whether you want to attend prayer meeting or home prayer meeting or family prayer meeting. It's up to you. But the Lord says, if you stop praying, you miss and stop something that is most important in what the Lord is teaching us. We are free, but we must be faithful and responsible to pray. So it's up to you. So wonderful that the, all these years in the history of the world, God developed the habit of prayer. God developed in people the need for prayer. And God developed in people the wonder of what prayers can do if we are prayerful. And so that's why we have the title in my message this morning, The Cease of Ceasing to Pray. When we stop praying, we commit sin and we miss the blessings that the Lord will give to us. So in my conclusion, I put here in our notes, we are free, but we must be faithful and responsible to keep on praying. So how is your prayer life today? How much of your time is given to pray? As you face many responsibilities or duties, like you students, and you professionals, and you parents? Do you have the lifestyle of prayerfulness? Or ang lifestyle of prayerfulness? Ngayon ka, Pastor, Duga, ipanas kinabuhi ko. Kung napit na lang ako mamatay, magsigin ako prayerful. Pero do you, do, do you know when you will die? So that you can be ready by being prayerful, maybe one month before you die, you, you will become very prayerful? No. You don't know. That's why you have to be prayerful now and trustful now. Because in the history of the world, God took thousands of years to teach people to pray. And it's only now that the teaching is complete. But it is complete but free for you to do it or not. You are free to do it or not. But when you don't do it and then you die, you will miss maybe 95% of your life by not praying and obeying God. And so, what do you know, do now? Because prayer is a very important part of man's life that God uh, gave to him about 3,000, 4,000 years ago. So let us avoid the sin of ceasing to pray for the Lord, to the Lord. But always trust him and always pray to him. Oh, the joy and the beauty of always praying and enjoying that. So there are many Christians who have succeeded beyond their imagination, who have succeeded beyond what they have prayed for because they were always prayerful and faithful. There are also Christians who missed maybe one half of their joys in life and success in life because they have not learned 
to pray. There are believers who have missed so many uh, beautiful experiences and beautiful uh, blessings in their lives because they have never learned to, de to pray from their youth until the old age or until they died. So remember, the lesson I have just gave to you is uh, more, a little bit difficult, but I have just simplified it. God moving and teaching us to pray. And then, men who prayed, they created beautiful things in their lives. You know, Abraham, Moses, David, Elijah, Elisha, the prophets. And then, today, in our time, uh, Jesus Christ has given us the wonderful uh, teaching about prayer. And then the model to pray. And so, let us now never exchange the most beautiful lifestyle of prayerfulness. What do you think is the most beautiful lifestyle you can find today? Is it uh, being uh, an engineer with a very big salary and then you die a millionaire? Or maybe uh, you will become uh, an engineer, a famous engineer who will build great buildings and great uh, engineering projects in countries of the world. And then you die very famous and very rich and very contented. But what about your prayer life? What about your faith? What about your obedience to God? So, I hope hindi masayang ang imong kinabuhi. Christians today must have a beautiful lifestyle, the lifestyle of faithfulness and prayerfulness. And no lifestyle, no success would be greater than that kind of prayer when we die. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this amazing, surprising challenges about prayer and faithfulness to God. So help us to be convinced of this and apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.